What led a bare knuckle boxer turned YouTuber to film his own descent into a spiral of madness, self destruction, and chaos? I will go to jail for what I am going to do to you. What man doesn't show the private parts to women? How did this public downfall lead to a dramatic conclusion with him being finally arrested at gunpoint on international TV, branded as a wanted sex offender and locked up in a Philippine detention camp? You trolls, man. You, you finally done it. You finally made up lies about me. This is the story of Decca Hege, who went from a bare knuckle boxer and podcaster with aspirations of becoming a movie star to a broken man vlogging his own drink and drug fueled public meltdown in the slums of the Philippines. It's the story of how a man's desire for fame and recognition put his family at risk and completely destroyed his own mental health as he battled to stop the many rumors of dark secrets from his past from being publicly exposed. From outside his point of view, it looks like a serial sex case, but I've actually fell on bad luck with these people. Of course, um, to with a girl who was 11 to participate in a sexual act. This is a big conspiracy to ruin my career, to ruin the podcast, and also ruin my life. My name is Decker Heggie and I am bipolar. I've suffered mental health for years, you know. I always had something wrong with me, but I could never ever put my finger on what it was. I've had two coffees, so I'm absolutely bouncing. Expresso! Um, you know, like I said, I monitor my videos, so I'm going to uh, speak openly again. Uh, I'm going to talk about addiction to sex um when i was a cocaine addict i was addicted to sex i've been put into a mental health team um i'm seeing a psychiatrist every two weeks i've been put on medication and um i'm not ashamed to say it, that i'm on uh, quetri quetri quetiapine when decker started posting videos on youtube in march 2020 he was met with immediate criticism when he branded himself as a mental health ambassador my name is Decker Heggie. I'm a former bare knuckle fighting champion, actor, author, and now mental health ambassador. I am welcoming you to my new podcast show, All or Nothing. This criticism started with a few negative comments on Decker's YouTube videos, but quickly escalated. And before long, there were a number of channels created on the social media platform, which were dedicated to exposing Decker as a fraud and revealing numerous allegations of sexual and violent crimes against women in his past.
Decker argued that these were the acts of jealous haters who were trying to bring him down, but the group that Decker referred to as his trolls insisted that they were acting solely in the best interests of the public by alerting potential future victims to the dangers of an active online predator. I've got to make this video. Um, I need to defend myself because what is taking place as we speak <clears throat> is a conspiracy and a recruitment of many, many people, including podcasters, to bring me down. In 2006, I was done for slapping a girl's ass in a nightclub. They are using this against me to bounce me off. As you'll see on the clip now, Bouncer Fondles Woman, Derek Gordon Heggie. I was 22 years old and I was drunk. And I walked past her on the stairs and slapped her ass. She was in her 20s. She wasn't a kid. I slapped her ass in a nightclub. This is what they're using to bounce me off, this newspaper clipping. Yeah? Also, you will see blurred out intimate videos of myself. As you'll see here, me to another consenting adult having phone sex. What man doesn't show the private parts to women? We all make stupid mistakes. They're also using this to bounce me off. Dirty voice messages to a girl of 22 years of age. She's not a kid, she's a grown woman. Another consenting adult that engaged in dirty conversation with me. They're also using this to piss me off. This is a big conspiracy to ruin my career and ruin the podcast and also ruin my life. There was no shortage of dark stories surfacing from Decker's past. And as quickly as he could deny or make excuses for these allegations, more voice notes text messages and witness testimonies would be released by the channels that Decker referred to as his trolls. But as Decker battled to try and sway public opinion in his favour, he was also battling on another front, a bitter feud with a local fighter from Decker's hometown of Carlisle was reaching its boiling point and was about to erupt into a violent conclusion that would bring unimagined new attention to this online public car crash. And I'll tell you now, there's two things in here in this world. It's grasses and it's sex offenders and you're both. And you're parading around this in town claiming that you're a governor and you're a mental health ambassador, right? And you're a patron and what? And you're an author and you're a movie star. Your time's come, Mr. Christie of Carlisle. Your time's come. You have made videos about me for two in years. You made videos taking the piss out of me, old man, my dad. Yeah, you're the one, Christy. Carlisle's finest. You, Carlisle's your town. We're gonna see about that. Around this town with my head held high, I get respect off everybody, and you got run out of this town. Listen, I'm angry. I will go to jail for what I am going to do to you. While we're on facts, I am 10 times the man. I'm 10 times the fighter and I'm as game as the cub. Trust me, Christy, I'm coming for you. When I get hold of you, you better be able to fight back. I'm willing to die. Let them come, let them come. Move, back, 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 back. Roll it all the time, keep it there, this is the this. I didn't know you were friends with Mr. Humble Dryer. Yeah, you've been outed, buddy. Because you're the one, right, who got Mr. Humble Dryer involved right at the start. While the feud between Danny and Decker continued to escalate, Humble Dryer was a name that kept coming up as Decker tried to argue against the many allegations being made against him. The Humble Dryer seemed to be a group of social media accounts ran secretively and in the shadows by a husband and wife couple who ran online campaigns against Decker and other individuals. Information started to come out that suggested they were behind some of the allegations being made against Decker and that they had been paying people to take part in these campaigns. This really muddied the waters and it started to become unclear which information that had been released about Decker was to be trusted. 
So it sounded like I had offered you £5,000 for something. But actually, can you confirm that that £5,000 related to money that was owed to you by your brother or something? Is that correct? How can my brother be involved in your messages? No, you were talking about it. You told me that there was a sum of £5,000 and it was your money. Oh, you, no, you, you said £5,000 to get his DBS check. No, no, that's incorrect. What did it mean then? You what? said be the hero. Yeah, I did. Okay, Darren, uh, thanks for letting us know that. How about if we donate £1,000 over the next three months? So, uh, like, we've put money into things, a lot of things. Um, we don't want any recognition for that, but um, we wouldn't want to just seem like we're just chucking money here, there and everywhere, you know. Um, three months is a good amount of time, I think, to sort out what we want to sort out and to kind of get to know you a little bit more, really. They are trolling, and I mean relentlessly, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, okay? They're not only trying to bribe Darren G with money, as you'll have seen in one of the videos Darren actually posted, I mean, I'm good friends with Darren, I get on with Darren. You'll have seen on one of the videos, Mrs. Humble, who pretends to be intelligent, right? Offering him money. What these people are doing is trying to buy people's YouTube channels off them to target me. It was clear that some of the channels attacking Decker had agendas other than public safety that were driving their campaigns. Some seemed to have a personal vendetta against Decker, while others had simply seen a way to gain financially by joining the anti-Decker campaign. Nothing changed though, and if anything, the pressure on Decca actually increased. More and more channels jumped on the story and began to investigate Decca's past. At one point, it seemed that almost every day, someone would put out further damning evidence that appeared to verify the legitimacy of some of the allegations from Decca's past. I'll explain every story, how it came about. None, none of it was ever, I was never ever taken to court for any of them. I've had such bad luck with women, you wouldn't believe it. But do you want to know something? If that ever went out publicly, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. People are sending me in new evidence every day by email. I think, I think the clerk could remember what happened there. About forgetting the top of the day or something like that. How old was she even at the time, man? Right, these horrible people, and I mean horrible, spend, they spend 24 hours a day behind a keyboard creating hundreds of fake YouTube accounts, targeting me, posting voice messages up of me speaking to women. Um, but that one in Blackpool was with Tanya, we were arguing in the hotel room, and uh Smashed the copper in the eye, that's what I actually got put on tag for. I'm surprised I haven't run a mile. But I know what an outsider's view would think of that. They would look at that and it's a serial. Well, I've never been guilty of any of them. But it's the the amount of them. The amount. All this voice messages that they're posting around, they come on in old news, man. But they are gonna be exposed. From an outsider's point of view, it looks like I'm a serial sex case, but I've actually fell on bad luck with these people. If that ever had to happen again, you wouldn't get away, would you? Well, yeah, there's, but like you said, there's no conviction of any sexual nature about slapping the bird's ass. Looking at that Claire's law, even that there, that sounds like I'm a serial sex case. Sitting up till twos and threes in the morning, typing away on YouTube. <laughs> There's going to be a few marriage breakups, I'll tell you. And I'm happy, because I'm going to get to see you scumbag squirm. But that never really happened. After several weeks of build-up by Decker, he released what he called his expose. He claimed that this groundbreaking documentary 
was going to out all of his trolls and would be the end of the campaign against him. The two hour video did not have the desired effect though. It was long, confusing and skipped from accusation to accusation with very little foundation or solid evidence. It seemed more like a retaliation than an expose and most of the content was aimed at painting his enemies in a bad light rather than showing any proof that they were making up lies about him. The expose came and went with very little effect and as the local feud with Danny Christie continued to escalate, the whole Decca Heggie story was about to blow up even further. Here we go, Danny Christie f using my name. This Thursday, I'm in Carlisle, right? Time and a place, and I'll be there. And I'm fighting you, get back to me. Dougie Joyce is gonna see fair play for me. So you get your fair play, man, Christy. I've been telling you to give me a time and a place for a week. Where's this time and place at? You had a chance two years ago to fight me or run to the law. What did you do? You ran to the law. You put a load of statements in, you stood there in the fucking court. And you got us jailed. And then two years later, you want an apology for your dad. Are you still sniffing subitex, Chava? I'll tell you what, I sympathise. I sympathise with the pair of them. As a parent, I sympathise with them because I tell you what, if they've gone through a fraction of what you're putting my kids through, I sympathise. Well, everybody, this is me, Dougie Joyce, speaking. I'm speaking on behalf of um, Decker Heggy. He wants me to show fair play. Go down there, have a bit of fisticuffs, a few bangs, never killed anybody, yeah? So, get your fair play men to ring me, Dougie Joyce, and I will make sure you get the best of fair play. There'll be no slyness, there'll be no nothing, and if you just won't fight, you'll get fight. And that there's a genuine fact, a million, one, million and one percent. I'm showing fair play with my cousin Dean, yeah? Get back to us and let us know what the crack is. Boys, 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 this is how it is. We're fighting people, you claim to be fighting people, yeah? So we're going to come there, there's fair play, no foul play. If you want foul play, we'll bring foul play, but ideally it's a fair play fight. Let the man come there, have a few bangs. Your boy comes, has a few bangs. It is what it is, being Lynch Ward, Manchester. Everyone thinks, oh, look, he's getting his chance with his troll. I don't think you expected me to take this pagger. I don't think you thought I was going to be ready. I think you thought that the fire had gone out. The fire has not gone out, mate. It's been there burning the whole time. I've got a chance to avenge what you've done to me. And every day that I was away from Mike and kids that you seem to, I'm gonna make you pay for that tomorrow. But what you got to achieve by chinning somebody 13 and a half stone, now I can take that like a man, but I've got other plans, mate. <coughs> Cause I'll beat you on Palmos and Stardog. This is a reply back to the message that I got um, off Decker Heggy from uh, Danny Christie. I'm Sean Fairplay from my pal, yeah? I've said to Paul Venus, you bring your pal, which is a gentleman, nice man, never done me wrong, I ain't got a problem with the fellow, yeah? When he brings you, you're gonna have your fight with him, I'm gonna bring Decker and he's gonna have his fight with you. That's it, it's put to bed. Your fight is gonna be scheduled for Friday next week. So, been speaking to Dougie Joyce today. Dougie Joyce um, has reached out to Danny Christie, trying to get, made a few videos, trying to get fair play for Decker. And, uh, and a straightener and a fight to sort the differences out. Danny Christie's reached out to me, uh, to, wants me to make a fair play on his behalf. Uh, Dougie, known Dougie is a fighting man, like myself, we're all fighting men. So fair play is right up my streets. I'm passionate about fair play. I'm passionate about one-on-one -on -one combat. I've been invited along to make sure it is one-on-one -on -one fight. It is fair play. It's gonna be in a secret location. Dougie with Decker and me with Danny. So yeah, massive respect to Dougie. Respect to Danny, respect to Decker. Let's get this fight sorted. May the best man win. The fight is on. It's on. This is a quick video going to Decker Heggy and Danny Christie. The fight on Friday has been confirmed. Both men will be turning up. And I just want to say to both men, I wish you both the best of luck. May the best man win. And hopefully after this fight, you can put everything to bed. So that's the way things should be. One-on-one -on -one combat. On Friday, you get the best of fair play. And uh, that's it then. Hopefully you can shake hands and walk away. I'm gonna win tomorrow. Now anyone who thinks I'm going down here tomorrow to face this an idiot and thinks that I'm going down there just so I can say, you know, I went down and fought him or maybe let him know he's been in a little bit of a fight. Nah, nah, I'm going to win. But the choice to get out of the fight and I won't, I never will. 
never back down like an inch, you'll see tomorrow. Brains and fundamentals, it's what's gonna beat you, mate, not a problem. I hope you're fit, mate. I hope you're fit and I hope you bring your day game. Because I'll tell you what, I'll see you tomorrow down the stretch. See, fighting, see, people don't understand that fighting is about the mental build-up as well. It's the calm before the storm. So it's the mental battle as well before the action. Take your head, the man. Five minutes, driving, driving, I'm ready. Yes, sir, I'm sick. This is the end. Well, you're first and fair Come on, come on, come on. Right, boys, that's it, listen. That's it, stun, boys. That's it, stun. No, listen, stun. Not your friend. No, we're not. Need Divi's round here, Mush. Oh, no. Yeah. Is it done? Come here. Is it done? Me and you talk. Yes or no? Is it done? Is it done from your side? Yes. My side, yes. That isn't the life I want. Do you know what I mean? It's... And big respect to Danny, he's a hard lad. I underestimate him greatly. We'll never be friends, but the respect's there as fighting men, and I respect him as a fighting man. Um, this, that's beef squash now. He decided at the end of it that, that that's it, you know, so I wish him all the best in his life. Over two million people watched the fight as it went viral worldwide. This brought a new wave of interest to the whole Decker Heggie story. And although Decker had vowed to walk away from social media, and stop engaging with his trolls after the fight, in reality, the opposite happened. Decker went on the front foot and now seemed to be actively courting the drama as he realized this type of content was far more financially rewarding than his podcast material. Make sure you join me in part two as more colorful characters throw their hats into the ring and the campaign to bring down Decker starts to get out of control.